Are you always coming up with ideas? Do you marvel at successful business owners? Do you hate being told what to do? Ever take things apart just to see how they work? Are you a dreamer? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. But first, a word from our sponsor. Tapes and Specialties is the world leader in tape manufacturing and specialty conversion with over 40 years of experience. In addition to our pro brand of high quality specialty adhesive tapes, we provide contract converting services that help improve your profitability, streamline your supply chain, and reduce inventory cost. We offer the most complete range of converting capabilities in the industry, such as cloth tape, double coated tape, specialty tape, paper tape, masking tape, vinyl tape, carton sealing tape, adhesive transfer tape, duct tape, phone tape, electrical tape, filament tape, foil tape, reflective tape. And the tape just keeps on rolling. Visit us online today at www.protapes.com or call us at 800-345-0234. Pro Tapes, it's just how we roll. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another fantastic episode of the Entrepreneur Enclave, Life's Coming Attraction. I am your host, Kevin Wortham. Listen, when I I tell you I am excited, man, I am excited. And, And it's so interesting that here we go again. This is probably one of the most sought after interviews I've wanted to do in my podcasting career. One of my fellow classmates, fellow alum, but just a woman who I admire for for so many reasons. And as we get into the conversation, you're going to see why. This is perhaps probably the smartest woman I know, and I know she better not let me down. (laughs) Melanie, welcome to the platform. How are you? I'm doing well, and that was pretty flattering. Thank you. Well, well, listen, you are quite welcome, and I, I know you won't let me down. You are the smartest woman I know. So... As, as we were prepping, I was telling you that uh, I normally don't, uh, matter of fact, I don't at all. I don't, I don't, I don't send my uh, guests uh, questions that I may have. We, we want to keep it organic. But I must, I must have a confession. I have a confession for you. When, mm-hmm. when we made confirmation that you and I were going to finally do this interview, and I think it's taken us over, over a year to kind of get it together. So that's... That's a testimony to a commitment, friendship, and a perseverance. I said, I'm going to write down two questions. And so here I am making the same mistake, uh, but, I, but, I, but, I, but I've, got, I've got to do this. So here's my, my first question. Based on where you are within NASA, do you believe that we have been here before? Do you think that there's other life forms other than we as human beings? <laughs> so I'm going to preface the answer with um, I'm a rocket scientist. I'm, I'm not um, an astrophysicist or okay. someone who, okay. who studies science that comes back. I get the stuff up there and whatever happens afterwards um, outside of an anomaly in space. But, um, you know, uh, <laughs> yes, I do assume that there, there is some form of life. I mean, we have found um, water and other types of elements that uh, would suggest there are, there is some form of life. Do they look like us? Uh, probably not, because the, atmos- the atmosphere and the chemical makeup is so different. But uh, yeah. Okay, and so so hopefully that didn't let you down. <laughs> well, no, you you actually you actually in height you you heightened my curiosity because rocket scientists that's even crazier <laughs> so <laughs> so my by my next question is so so you believe that are you are you are you, do you believe that they still perhaps are are traveling back and forth now is that possible the other who is traveling back and forth the, people from the, an, people from another the, world the, the assumed other other uh, um, 
types of life forms. Yes. Uh, I, your your colleague from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> well, will I one day be able to have communication? But um, it, it's really not something I think about a lot. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, no, I, I was I was just curious, you know, because it's it's like, um, what's the guy's name? Neil Neil deGrasse. Yeah. Uh, every time you see him on a show, at some point within his segment, they always ask that question about uh, about transportation. Does life exist? You know, and and so I said I've got to ask that same question. <laughs> so I'm sorry. But, well, he and I are a little bit different in, in as far as our expertise. Yes. However, um, I don't know how much of a fan I am of his. After he said Pluto is in the is in a planet, and I was getting ready to launch something to Pluto. But wait, hold up! I I got to ask a question. At at one point it was, and then at one point they said it wasn't. And right? Well, I don't know if it was the politics or whatever, but we were getting ready to launch New Horizons, Pluto and Beyond. Yes. Which is something that I was, I, I was made like a major contribution to. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, right around that time, might have been two, between 2004 and six, maybe somewhere yes. around there. Yes. And then of course, uh, once we, once we reached Pluto, um, they decided, okay, it's a planet. I, I have no idea. Like, you know, those are people who talk and talk and talk and, you know, throw their, uh, their name around as if this is true expertise. Got you. Uh, I don't know. Once again, my job is to get the stuff out there. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> and, and, I, I, and I have no backbone. Uh, and I can't even defend, I can't even say anything. I can't even ask the next question within that realm because I just don't know. Uh, but for many of us, when we see him, particularly because he's an African-American man, we, mm -hmm. are, we are just so excited. Like, go ahead, brother. You, you, you know, mm -hmm. so, so I'm going to, I'm going to leave that conversation alone until I get, until I get smarter. But, uh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to defame him no. I, or anything like that. So. It's just, <laughs> no, no. it was something that kind of just mm, rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I have to get over it. And maybe that's something I need to get over myself. <laughs> well, 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 what's going to happen is we're going to, we're going to, we're going to raise you up to a platform where you can have that conversation in person with him. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. Right. I'm going to sell tickets, HBO or, you know, or Netflix. Yes. All right. And have, and have the, you know, the world's smartest people talk about this conversation he had or lack thereof. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. But listen, Mel, I'm, I'm sorry, Melanie. Um, Either or it's fine. It's let's, okay. let's, let's go back to the beginning, right? Because this is so exciting for me. And again, thank you for being on the platform. So I think we, we meet in 1983-84, University of Eight, Pittsburgh. 83, yeah. Yes. And so you come onto campus. And what was your intended major at that time? Electrical engineering. Electrical engineering. And so did you think that you wanted to be a part of uh, putting rockets into space and beyond? Or how did that all come about? And just, and but I mean, you know, I'm going too fast too. So you get, well, on, I, you, you, you get, okay. you get to the, you get to the campus. What did you think about the campus? And why did you pick the University of Pittsburgh? I picked the University of Pittsburgh because I was a huge Steelers fan. Okay. I mean, like, I just lived black and gold. Gotcha. and still do. Got you. I, you know, I, I, I told my husband that he had to convert before we got married. Did he? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh woo -hoo 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 -hoo. that's all right. <laughs> now he's so into it, I have to tell him every time I go to a conference, don't have me come home and have my house black and gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Ooh, that's some love. That's some love for you. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, he's a super, super wonderful man. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> okay. So, so you, so you, you, you go to Pitt because of the Steelers. Uh, how yeah. Did, how did you? Oh, Oh, okay. wait, wait, wait. Okay, go Excuse ahead. Yeah. And Dan Marino. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 So now you're you're on campus. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, what did you what did you think about your your classmates, and what did you know about Pittsburgh prior to outside of the Steelers? I didn't know anything about Pittsburgh. Um, okay. I didn't go to the summer program. Um, I didn't know anything. I I uh, was it was a bit of culture shock. Yes. Um, especially the group from Philly. Okay. Very intense group. Um, interesting. Um, <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way. It was, yeah, yeah. It was, it, it, you know, it's uh, all of our different communities of where we came from. Yes. Um, we're just so different. And yes. uh, so it, it was a beautiful experience to get to learn, you know, different and I have to say different cultures. <laughs> different yeah, cultures that's exactly, we're all black. That's all exactly what it was, cultures. though. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now, yeah. Now, now where I, you, did you stay on campus? Um, yes, my first couple of years. Okay. Yeah. Which doing Tower B. Tower B. Okay. Okay. And then, and then t- Lothrop. And then Lothrop. Okay, yeah, that's that's where I was, and I and I realized between Tower B and Lothrop, there was their own culture and community in and of oh. itself, right there. Oh, oh my goodness. god! So, <laughs> so Tower's life and Lothrop so incredibly different. Yes, yes. Oh my god! So you're you're on campus, and uh, how how are you academically? Um, that you know, because to, to, to major or want to major in uh, engineering, that's a, that's a tough feat. So how- well, before I went to school at Pitt, yes. um, I, I love, I love math. Math yes. is just insane. And, um, remember having a talk with, uh, my advisor or counselor in high school. Yes. And, basically said, you know, math is good. I don't know how much money you're going to make with math. Maybe you should think about engineering. It's okay. Wow. <laughs> so wow. That's why wow. And, and, and it ended up being the right choice for me because eventually I was able to put a lot of mathematics, like what I do now, but we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, and just so to- I was actually study, I think, is it Sean's outlines? I can't remember. what, But I would actually on my own, just do calculus problems and things like that um, in my spare time when I was in high school. Wow. And, you know, just the, just the stigma, right, that uh, black men and women weren't good at math. Well, I'm really good at math. What we, I, obviously, <laughs> listen, listen, that, listen, I, that's why you're on the show, right? Because I, they, don't, they don't want me you know, claiming to be a rocket scientist trying to get a rocket up there. It won't go two feet if, <laughs> if it was up to me. <laughs> but, yeah, no, but I'm glad that you are at the helm. But, yeah. But, I mean, did you ever did you ever come across that where women weren't to be good at math, women weren't supposed to be good at engineering? Did you ever come across that? Well, of course. Yeah. And so I mean, how, how did you push through that? How did you overcome that? <laughs> such a deep question. I mean, I mean, I live it to this day. Got you. Where, you know, they'll know who I am. They know what I've contributed. And when a question gets answered, the ask, and it's based off of my work, they feel more comfortable with the person sitting next to me answering that question. Wait, 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 wait. Slow. And, and there's a, a problem twofold on that. It's one that they have a problem or it's easier for them to hear it from someone else. And two, how dare that someone else start answering it? <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's still, but you know, I, I mean, you have to have a strong backbone. You have to have a strong voice, which tends to be intimidating to others, but it's like, don't put me in this place where I have to have that strong voice and we wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> what, wait, but, but let me, let me stop and let's unpack that so I can understand it. So someone is asking you a question. You Well, you, we're in a meeting. Yes. We'll be in a meeting. Yes. Someone will ask a question that's based off of my work. Yes. And look at the person next to me to answer it because they're in my group. Yes. 
and I, I mean, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I'm an expert in a, in a particular field. I, I mean, and, and these people know it, but they'll look at the other person and that person will start answering the question instead of saying, well, <laughs> I'm going to give that to Melanie to answer. Wow. Wait. Now, does it? That's it, something I ask all the time. And I don't allow, I mean, like once they start answering, I will try to find um, a calm way of, stopping them and, and start talking. God bless you. <laughs> Cause I think I had to break out some windows. So, so does, does the person who's answering the question look like you? No. Okay. The opposite. Okay. Now the, now the first time that happened, what level of rage or discomfort did you have? I would say that I still have that rage of discomfort, but I'm able to process it differently. Yes. To not let it linger as long. Got you. Got you. I've learned how to respond better. And so, I mean, there was, when I was younger, there were times I responded. Sometimes I didn't, you know, it's just kind of like shock. Yes. I've got, mm. I've, got yeah. a, I've got a solution for it's you, right? It still happens. I've got a no, solution to this day, for you. I haven't watched Hidden Figures because it's just, you know, my life isn't Disney. Yes. And I can't, I don't know, I don't know how I'm going to feel when I watch it. Got you. But, but, but people have told you about it, though? What, Hidden Figures? Yes. Of course. Like, every time someone meets me. Okay, that's the, that's the, that's the first <laughs> connection, Hidden Figures. Wow. Okay. I'll watch it one day. Yeah. But I, I, I re- I've got a I've got a solution for you, right? You said that you are a big uh Steeler fan. Remember uh Jack Lambert, uh, middle linebacker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You should get like a uh a, a small picture or maybe one of his dolls and you put that on your table or your or the podium and so and tell them that story first that uh, you, are, you you love the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. And if anybody gets out of hand, you will do to them what Jack Lambert did. <laughs> I don't know if I'm old. <laughs> no, wait, wait. And trust me, Melanie, every question would come to you and they would wait for you to give the answer. <laughs> yeah, I... I... <laughs> you, know, you know, sometimes you have to, you have, I, and I, you know, it, God bless you for being in that space and being so eloquent in that space. But I think for someone like me, sometimes you just have to let folks know that, listen, I got here by hard work and please do not try to minimize who I am in this space. So, you know, in, in yeah, but they won't hear that. They won't hear that. I mean, okay. They hear that. And, and, um, it's very interesting um, how much, how easily they can dismiss what you're saying or even dismiss your contribution. Yes. You know what I mean? Because there's two things going on. Well, there's several facets here, and it depends on the person that you're dealing with. Um, it could be that person that really just cannot deal with the fact that you are black or you are a woman or both. Yes. Uh, or it's that person who's trying to get ahead. And I mean, I, I get the same per- thing where there's someone trying to get ahead and there'll be these meetings that are had, they'll, they'll, and I'm not invited, but they'll be discussing my work as if they're a part of it. Wow. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that go on in this, which is why I started my own company. I mean, I just, wow. Yeah. You know, it's, it's very <laughs> difficult to yeah. deal with all it still happens, but not in my company since it's just me, but yeah. <laughs> you know, having to deal with, with others, uh, putting their names on my work and yeah, it's, it's very interesting. So, so that's the, that's the end goal. Let's start, let's start the beginning. So you, so you, you graduate from, from Pitt and what was your degree in? Um, I had a major in electrical engineering and a minor in computer science because they did not have computer engineering at the time. Okay. So I created computer engineering. Wow. 
And so where do you go from there? And, and so what do you, what, what's, what's your job outlook at that time? What do you think you want to do? Um, I stayed at Pitt and, and got my master's. Yes. So, but you, and then after, go ahead. No, no. So I'm saying, but, but in terms of, in terms of opportunities in, in your career, in your field of interest, what, what were they at that time that you really wanted to do? Um, I wasn't still quite sure um, coming out of um, undergrad. Yes. And, and while I was in grad school, the semiconductor industry just went through a huge boom. Um, and it just so happened that those were the type of things I was studying. And, um, yeah, and so I went to IBM. Okay. Okay. And so while you're at IBM... Are you, are you, uh, what do you, what are some of the things that you're doing for IBM at that, at that time? Um, I was in their, um, center of intelligence and, and, um, I was working on their mainframe computers. Yes. Wow. And so at that, at that time, were there, were there thoughts about, you know, artificial intelligence or, or that, uh, cars would be, you know, driven by themselves at that point? Was that, was that, was that a conversation? No, no, not, not that I knew of. I mean, I'm sure some, I mean, there's robotics, right? Yes. But not to the extent of, uh, having them controlled, um, with the AI algorithms that we have now. Yes. But it's funny because my thesis that I did in, 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 in uh, at Pitt for my master's, um, looks a lot like the base of a lot of the AI algorithms that we do now. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so that, I, I guess that's, that's causing you to scratch your head and said, I was onto something back then. Mm. <laughs> what, what it's doing is that I'm going to apply a lot of that knowledge that I did in the eighties. <laughs> yes. Got you. Got new you. stuff. Um, so some the- fun new stuff. So how long were you at uh, IBM? I was there for about three years, and um, I had always wanted to go back and work on my PhD. Yes. Um, I only had my master's at that time. And IBM, um, they were going through layoffs. Yes. And I figured this was a great time to take the money and go. Okay, okay. So I offered myself, but like... They were either you can take this or we'll lay certain people. I wasn't going to get laid off because they were underpaying me for all the work that I was doing. So I was definitely someone going to say. But um, yeah, I, I took the money and moved to Colorado. I went to the University of Colorado. Okay. And and this is where you you started working on your your you became a PhD candidate. Yeah. And what was what was your? I, I, you you got to help me now. Because this this is starting this is starting to become all over my head. What are you What are you studying now? What are you working? On? What is your doctorate in? Electrical engineering again, um, and then the focus of the of what I um, was you know actually studying um, changed throughout the course. I, I, I went in there originally to study um, a mixture of fiber optics and computing. So moving away from electrons to pure photons, um, and that just didn't quite get me much. And um, then I moved into what is called formal verification, which is very much so um, heavily mathematic, like a lot of mathematics and optimization um, uh, algorithms. Why? Why did you choose the University of Colorado as opposed to other other schools? Money. Oh, in terms of what <laughs> they in terms of what they were uh, additionally offering you. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Okay. Wow. So you. Uh, oh, excuse me. Hmm? Let me. Let me okay. Back. There were there were there were three schools okay. um, that had um, optic, optical com- computing. That's what it was called at the time, and it was Rochester which I definitely wasn't going to go to because it was cold and dark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so the two were the University of Arizona and 
University of Colorado. Ooh, Arizona, okay. Yeah. So and I, I'm surprised. Cold. That pick, yeah, I know. I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't pick Arizona, but um, what Colorado offered was just it was too good to pass up. Got you, got you. All right, so it's uh, Doctor Melanie Berg. No, no, I didn't. No, I did not finish my PhD. Oh, okay. Okay. Did not finish because my daughters were going through culture shock moving to Boulder. So I'm surprised you haven't asked me about my freshman year of Pitt. Well, listen, this is why I don't write any questions down. You can always stop me and tell me what we need to be talking about. But please, let's let's go. Let's 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 move into that. Then, okay, yes. I mean, I came into Pitt two weeks pregnant. Oh, oh, I, oh, Which I, plan? I didn't know that. Yeah, I walked around freshman year, huge. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Wait, I, I'm not, I'm not laughing at you. I'm, I'm laughing with. Well, I guess we're laughing together. But what? Wait, hold yep. up, hold up, hold up. You came into pit your freshman year, pregnant, two weeks prior to school. Yeah. Wow, we. With twins. With twins. Who were born on my birthday. Wait, well, <laughs> but I, so you must, did you wear a lot of big clothes? Cause I don't, I don't remember bumping into you like that. Um, I mean, my freshman year, it's not like, you know, you know I, I, I was, uh, out like with the, with the big belly partying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and, and I think because you were in Lothrop, not in the towers. Okay. Yes. Okay. Wow. So how, so how was that then going through school pregnant? It was a shocker because I I didn't know, um, coming in, um, and it it definitely made, you know, maybe it was something I needed because it made sure that um, the excitement of a freshman year did not get me out of focus. Yes. But I, I stay very much so in focus. Um, I had A's in all my classes. Yes. Um, I was so big. They were born seven pounds each, but I couldn't even sit behind a desk. Wow. Um, I remember going to my calculus final. And I I don't know if you know because you were in Lock Up, but Tower B was notorious for the elevator getting stuck. Oh yes. And I got stuck in the elevator on my way to my final. And they they're not gonna give you extra time. If you're late, it's just tough. And so Wow. Did we get on the intercom, you know, we're stuck. I said, Hurry up and get ready to have my baby. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone in that like in their face was like, "Oh my god!" Wow. And as soon as they got there, they 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 got there very quickly, yes. and they got they you know we get out the elevator, and I just start waddling off to my final. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I got wow. there and I killed it. I got every every question right. Wow! Congratulations! Wow! Yeah, but but. But 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 I guess the I guess the question is what was inside of you that still wanted you to go to school because most people at that time would say listen I will I will have my children and I'll come back you know a year or two from now to 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 pick up what was inside of you that kept pushing you to go now Well my mother and I didn't have the money for me to make that decision Understood So I was on scholarship Yes and uh, it it was a difficult decision. Yes, it was a very difficult decision. Um, you know, the, my sophomore year, my mom and their father um, jointly took care of them while I went to school. Yes, um, all of that. You know, it wasn't easy. Yes, you know, but Me- uh, you know, Ooh, Melanie, my mother was a very very strong woman. Yes. And, you know, there are a lot of similarities between us there are so many that are not. I mean, my, my mother was a Russian-German 
Jewish woman. Yes. Straight hippie. Yes. I'm not quite that hippie. Um, <laughs> and who loved beautiful black men. Got you. In the 60s Got when you. it was illegal. Yes. I was born before it was legal for my mom and dad to be together. And what she went through as a white woman having a black baby and, you know, having to work. All right, let me put this. Let, let me put it like this. Yes. At the time, we had to show Mary Tyler Moore. And she was really excited that she had a job and she's throwing her hat up in the air like life is great. I'm a woman with a job. Okay. My mom was the woman with a job with a black baby before it was legal. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and her family disowned us. And she, you know, she had to make it work. And she didn't skip a beat. She made sure that I was feeling loved and cared for. Um, you know, she just, and then also, you know, as I got older and knew there were some por portions of the family that came back in, but I, I, uh, I knew there were other portions that, that were not comfortable with me yes. and my mother's decision. There was this thing inside of me. It was like, well, if I do better, I do better, I do better. They'll accept me. All right. That's just not the way life works. You know what I mean? People are going to do what they want to do and think what they're going to think. Yes. But it just gave me that push to excel. Now, now, and that's what I did. Let me, let me ask this question. When you came to Pitt, which town, which town were you coming from? So we were originally from New York. Okay. And my father, um, I mean, just he went, he was on drugs, and we did what we call an escape from New York to somewhere he would never find us, and that would be Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Wow! And that was an extreme culture shock for me. Yes, because um, that was actually my first time being in a all black neighborhood in Harrisburg. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So then, yeah, so I came from Harrisburg to Pitt. Yes. Yeah. Woo. So yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, and you know, I, 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 I never, I never knew this. Wow. You, you, Melanie, you are my hero. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> no, seriously. Wow. We thank you for sharing. And so, What was I, I guess so you're you're you you are a mother now, you're going through school. I, I are you there for your children when they do the big moments of they they they, they first speak uh, mommy or you're still at school and so you, you're not able to be a part of that? Um, so I was with them Yeah, that's that's interesting. So there was a lot that I missed. Yes. Um but um, that full stop, it, it's amazing how the timing was there. Like they were born just a few days after finals were finished. Yes. <laughs> wow. And I packed up my room and walked down. They were a little bit late actually. Okay. And I had to walk down to McGee's woman's hospital from the towers. Wow. Huge. But I was trying to, to get them to, to come along because I had to get back to Harrisburg. Yes. So I had them in Pittsburgh. We went to Harrisburg, and then I was with them that whole summer. And then I would go home every other weekend. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, there was a lot that I missed, um, which is a shame. Um, but the point is, we made it work. Yes. But it's it's the sacrifices well, I, I, that you made then to look at where you are now. Wow, we. Wow. That's what. I and say it's just, you know you have to balance you know I have a special brain for what I do yes, and do. it was it, it, and you know it's hard to put in words of you know it is a sacrifice it was a sacrifice not just for my part but obviously obviously for my family yes and uh, now yeah now now Melanie I, 
have you have you shared this story with a lot of people? Your backstory. Well, most black people at Pitt and I know. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't know. Okay, so you trying to say I'm not black people? <laughs> you are definitely. It's not that you don't know. I, mean, like, I don't know anyone at Pitt that doesn't know that I was pregnant on the campus. Okay, so I guess I'm not. I'm not black people then. Okay, okay. <laughs> So then, a hundred percent didn't mean it like that, but I'm just talking. I know, I know, I know. (laughs) But I'm listen. But I'm still not. You know, I um, and it's so funny. I you know, my major was um, urban studies, political science, right? And I took an accelerated class. I think my junior year, and um, they're asking me. uh, The professor, I think, was Asian. He's asking me, you know, because I'd always sit in the front row. So he's asking me a question about the urban, the urban landscape. And he's, he, we're like three or four questions in. And like by the fifth question, I'm tired. So I said, listen, I am not Mr. Black man. I, I don't know. All, I don't, I don't know all this stuff. Right. I said, I, I, I live in this, I lived in an urban environment. It was relatively small. I said, but some of the questions you're asking me, I just don't know. So I, it, it, your thought. I mean, when I responded to you that way, I had that, 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 that image came to my mind. So I just had to digress and share that with you. But listen, I didn't know, but, but, but I, I thank you for being, you, you listen, you are my hero. I, I am going to get bumper stickers now and saying my, my friend is a rocket scientist. That's, oh my God, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay. All right. So, so everybody knows, but me, all right, little old Kevin. (laughs) <laughs> and and so you continue to go through school and then every other weekend you're you're coming you're coming back home yeah okay okay and so they yeah. are beginning to see the sacrifices that uh, you're making on their behalf as mom and then so how how is the relationship between you and your mom at this time is she beginning to to uh, know that you've got a different brain developing I mean, she always did. Got you. Um, and I mean, my mom. She she was she was so incredibly proud of me, yes. no matter what. Um. However, you know, she she wanted me to to hurry up. <laughs> Be a full time mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine that one. Now, listen. Do you mean you're getting your master's? Get back here. <laughs> no. I want to. I want to ask a personal question. And as we were prepping, I said, "I, if I say something that's out of line, just say Kevin. That's out of line. Next question. Okay. Uh, I'm good with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now, at any point, does your does your father come back in the picture? No, my father died um, when I. My my freshman year. Wow, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, before they were born. Got you. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 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 He 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 led a very interesting life. All right. Thank you. So, so we so we we've got your mother just pushing you to be successful, but to pushing you, but pushing you to hurry up. And so at, at what point do you become a full-time mom? Um, when I went back, uh, as soon as I, I graduated from my master's. Got you. All right. So now, now I went back to Harrisburg. I yes. got them and then went to New York. So you, so you which go where we're already from. Got you. Okay. And so you, you, how we got into this part of the story, you were talking about why you're at um, in Colorado, you had culture shock for the, for the girls. They did. Yes. Can you, can you share that with us? I mean, Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> but I'm, but I mean, they're, uh, they're, they're with their mother, right? Me. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sitting with them inside their classroom. So they're they're in elementary school, but you know the the final parts of elementary, like fifth or sixth grade. Yes. 
you got to remember, my daughters will be 39 next month. <laughs> oh, my God. We're getting old. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm with you. Wow, we okay. And my grandson, my grandson's twenty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay, I got you. But so they were, you know, they, we had a birthday sleepover party, and you know, one of the girls found their uh their their hair grease. And made fun of them, you know. Yes. It, it was it was very hurtful and things like that. They started developing a lot earlier than the other girls. Yes, they but just I, weren't comfortable. But I, but I'm but I'm saying, and again, the the dynamics between you and your mother, and and then moving, you know, all around and knowing how things were different and illegal. Did they not pick up on any of this, or they were just protected from that i mean they they were pretty much protected from it um and and until you go to a school i mean you know it's that interaction with with kids your own age got you right um it's one thing for your family to embrace you yes um and they they grew up with understanding all of their heritage i mean we had chris mcquantica so. Now say that again. What? <laughs> Chris McQuantica. <laughs> yeah. You got Christmas. Yes. You got Quan- yes. Uh, Quantica. Yes. Wow. That wow. We. <laughs> so they embrace all of yes. who they are. So as a kid, uh, as a kid, that's man. That's like that's pay dirt, right? Man. Well, they get presents for every single one. We acknowledge everything. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Yeah. But maybe that's the wrong household we brought up in. I'm, I'm going to, yeah. No more books, mommy. I don't want to learn no more things. <laughs> so with Hanukkah, it's not like you're getting, you know, a huge amount of money, everything. You know, you yeah. spend a drink a day. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> I like, got it. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. I love it. So now, uh, when do you... Uh, move into the the space of of uh becoming this this world renowned rocket scientist cuz i i know i think the last time we finally made contact you were traveling to do a workshop in um australia correct yeah yeah so but i mean prior to that i mean way prior to that when when does the when does uh the notion of you becoming a rocket scientist when does that move into your brain space or was this something um, that you were always moving towards? So I, I was in the ASIC chip uh, world, um, yes. the world um, up until the late 90s. Yes. And um, had the opportunity to work across seas um, and home and, you know, and domestically. And then um, this was a time where I actually did get laid off, okay. which was shocking to me like but you know it was that time where companies would just hire a lot of people and then you know lay off a certain set and yeah it was just shocking wow. <laughs> like and it probably you know it was in Colorado I'm sure there was some background ridiculousness going on however it landed me at Ball Aerospace, and um, I was like, "Wow, this wow. is cool!" Yeah, and um, the type of designs that were um, that they were needing to do, they didn't quite have the expertise. Yes, um, working with a particular device that that I knew how to do very well. Yes, and so. Um, although the design was for space, I mean, I understood how to do it. Um, and had brown bag lunches there, teaching other people, and really grew um, their design team pretty well. Yes. And, um, and then started getting into 
which is interesting, is the radiation effect in space. So when we send something into space, there's a lot of particles there. And these particles can zoot at the electronics and change the state, meaning something can turn on that should be, you know, off or vice versa. I mean, things can drop out of the sky because of that, or we can have some pretty poor decision making up there. And so it's all about studying different types of particles, the probabilities that these things would happen. And then I got into creating circuits that correct themselves. We call them self-mitigating circuits. Yes. And um, yeah, I just, and I love, I completely love the uh, field because it mixes the design that I was doing and mathematics, you know, with probabilities and, you know, driving my own equations. I couldn't be happier. And, and then um, started communicating with some people at NASA from, from different um, conferences and got a job there. Wow. Wow. Yes, yeah, so that's when I moved from Colorado to, to Maryland. And that would have been around 2004. Okay. Now, now, now I got to, I got to ask this question. I got to stop you and I got to ask this question, right? Why don't you want to watch hidden figures? Because I feel like I'm still dealing with that dismissive, you know, that, that hidden aspect of, okay. You do the work and let me put my name on it. And it, and it bothers me. And I don't want to watch a movie where I'm so happy that, you know, a lot of the women that were dealing with this um, got their claim, got their acknowledgement. I'm happy. But I'm, and I can't tell you I'm not getting it. I mean, <laughs> I'm doing extremely well for myself. You know, you mentioned my name around the world. People know who I am. Yes. I'm, Deal. But with all of that, I still have to deal with these little pockets of disres- disrespectful, dismissive, controlling behavior. Yeah, but <clears throat> I mean, well, I, I'm I'm sorry, but but I'm I'm thinking if they did like a modern day hidden figures, and you told your backstory. I think that people now, because of the space that we're in, they'd be so much more receptive, right? Maybe. Maybe, right? I'm just just not ready to see the movie. I'm sure I will see the movie. Okay. Well, let's let's play it. Can we play a game for a second? What? Let's watch the movie? No, 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 (laughs) no, no. no. Let's play the game. So if we if we were to do say a Hidden Figures Part Two, who would who would play your part? Who would which actress would you want to play your part? Hmm. <laughs> huh? Um, I would say that um, the personalities would be very different. Um, okay. I'm. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Okay, that's well. You know what? I'm gonna. So after we, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is gonna be part two of our conversation, right? But I, I'm. No, I'm just. I just. I just think that. Um, and I I, under, I understand that I certainly can't feel I feel a portion of what you feel, uh, but man I I just think that the timing has gotten so much better now right because now as a as a as a woman of color you can walk into any space now and and the majority of people are going to celebrate you now right and you're going to have a few knuckleheads that are just going to be knuckleheads that just don't want to see you in that space I, and we get that. But I, I think that uh, if I can do anything, and certainly this this platform here, we are going to celebrate you, sister. That's all right. Yes. You know, it's interesting because you're right. It is just a few knuckleheads in yeah. in, in comparison to um, the people who, who are listening and following and read my work. I mean, it's, 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 it's a great feeling. Yes. It's just unfortunate those few knuckleheads are usually one to um, have the power to try to stop me. Now, are they stopping me? No, I find a way. Exactly. It's a little bit frustrating. Matter of fact, I mean, it, it, it's, I just bought this book 
by um, Elizabeth Leva. Okay. I'm not a black woman's guide to navigating the workplace. Okay. <laughs> and it, it's, it's kind of like the analogy of that black person with a knife or gun when nothing's in their hand. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not yelling at you right now. I'm, yes. I'm trying to be heard. And you're not, you're not hearing me. Yes. So I, I, it's a good book. She, she, uh, she, she gives a lot of respect and acknowledgement to the words of Maya Angelou. Yes. And uh, yeah, it, I think it's a, it's a great read. So. Wow. So let, let's, let, let's go back. Um, so you, you start your, you start your own company now. And so this, this is giving you maximum exposure now. So now when you go to the various conferences, people are excited to see about your designs and some of the things that you've written. How, now, how does that, how does that, how does that, uh, how does that work with you in your own company now? Well, so when I decided to go on my own, yes. um, NASA didn't want to let me go. Um, they treat me really well at NASA. I, I had a problem with one particular person, which made me go off, you know, like want to do my own company. But other than that, I, I have to say to NASA um, in general, they, they do, they do well. Um, so sometimes I go to the conferences with my NASA hat and sometimes I go with uh, my company's hat, which is Space R Cubed. Now say that one more time. The uh, name of your company, Space R Cube. Space R Cube. Yeah, okay. like a space cube or something yes. like Space R Cubed. Yes. Wow. Um, and so when people see me, though they they know me as me, Melanie. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm a pretty well known. Well, one you can't miss me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm I'm pretty boisterous too. I mean, I have a hard time with the BS and and hypocrisy. Yes. And you know, there are two spaces that I work in. I work with um, <laughs> two spaces. I work with space, natural space, and I also um, work in our trust and security, national um, trust and security, and. There's a lot of money. I mean, there's a huge, a lot of money in, in the, uh, in the trust and security space. And there are a lot of people who are just grabbing it and have no idea what they're doing. And, and basically at the last conference I was at, I, 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 there's this group that just keeps getting all of this money and, and they are doing very poor work. Wow. And I, I, I got up there and I said, you are right now being more of a national threat than an adversary. Whoa. So now I think yeah. <laughs> yeah, that really well with them. But, you know, I got so many people afterwards, you know, thank you. I mean, <laughs> maybe a hundred people like we look up to you, but those few people that got a little upset, <laughs> yeah, yeah. who knows what they're going to do now. <laughs> You 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 just got to put on your Jack Lambert gear. See, I'm, t- I'm telling you, got to put on your Jack Lambert gear. <laughs> that, so yeah. so so you're so you're like the uh, you're like the uh, rocket. You you've got like a rocket science groupies, right? <laughs> huh? No, I, I mean, you know, so many thoughts are going through my mind at this moment, and I and I and I certainly do apologize. Remember that movie with uh, with uh, Jodie Foster? Which movie? There was a movie Jodie Foster was I, in. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 and and she, there, there, the the aliens they were sending her a diagram how to build this spaceship to come to where they were. I forgot the name. Contact. It was called Contact. Okay. And and again, the imagery, that imagery just came to my mind as you were talking about you were telling this other group 
how they were just putting out poor work and how this other, and then there was another group that was trying to steal credit from Jodie Foster because she was a woman. They didn't think this woman had the, the, I guess the brain or the bandwidth to put together these algorithms, but it was, yeah. it was her, it was her, it was her whole design. But this other guy thought he should have been in that space and he was just trying to take over. So that whole imagery just came to my mind as you were, as you were talking and again, I apologize. I am. I, I, Don't listen, apologize. listen, I'm sorry. Right. I'm so glad that we are friends and you're allowing me this humble, ignorant man to ask you questions. Cause I am really out of my space right now. <laughs> Well, you know, but, doing a great job. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, but 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 you are so humble. My God, you are so humble. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So here we go. Now here for the hard questions. Okay. If there's a woman that wants to follow in your footsteps, and I'm quite sure you are being so impactful, and you are you are mentoring so many women. What's the first thing that you would say to these women that they need to do that want to follow in your footsteps? You you have to love what you do. Yes. I mean, I love what I do. Um, when I go to sleep, I'm solving equations. I mean, I just, <laughs> my, I mean, it really is. I'll wake up like I got it, you know? Wait, 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 wait. Melanie, you're telling me you're going to bed with a pen and a paper by your bedside because you're, you're working on a problem. I wouldn't say a pen and a paper, okay. but yeah. What? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I just, you really have to love what you do. Um, and that will help you get through, you know, the trials and tribulations that may occur. Yes. Not everyone is going to deal with what I deal with. I mean, I think for me, the problem is, is that, you know, I do call people out and, you know, I, I, if you're going to get on the podium and you are proposing things that are either, you know, national security issues or, um, or solutions, I should say, or even things for, you know, our, our flight program, you're on a podium, you should be questioned, you should be challenged, and you should be ready for it. Yes. I feel the same way I get up there. But because I do that, you know, uh, people want to silence me for sure. Wow. And, so, and I refuse to be silenced. So you just have to be ready, but you also have to be smart about it. I mean, you have to pick your battles. You know, you, you don't, it's not a fight. It's a challenge. Yes. Okay. Um, when I'm talking technically, it might be a fight for your existence. <laughs> Once they try to silence you, yes. But don't try to take on these people as if you're fighting them. It's about technical correctness. It's about trying to find optimal solutions, um, and that's how I I view it. Unfortunately, my colleagues who are up there. You know, they're not driven by optimal solutions because if they were, then you have that discussion. You have that debate. You take on the challenge. It's yes. fun. It's learning experience, you know, but that's just not the way the world works. So you got to be ready for it. Got you. Man, there, there's so much that we need to cover because I, I am just in awe of you and this conversation. Wow. We now. Can we can we talk about some of your designs? Um, well, you know, the one that I, I told you about was uh, New Horizons, Pluto and Beyond. Yes. Uh, so a lot of what I do um, or did uh, was either the portions of the brains of the, of the spacecraft or um, which is the controlling mechanism. And then there are what we have what we call instruments that stick off the spacecraft to be able to observe wherever, you know, whatever we're doing. Yes. Um, so, but now <clears throat> I don't, I'm not a pure designer anymore. Yes. Like what I work with is, is more, um, 
kind of like the base of the designs, like explaining to our programs or our missions how you do the self mitigation, how you, how you um, put the fault tolerance into the design. So I kind of work on all programs now. Okay. Okay. Now, now, question. Uh, I guess about a year and a half ago, during the pandemic, they they had this whole thing race to space, right? Did any of those companies contact you, like uh, Elon Musk or SpaceX or, or, or Virgin Airlines? Did, did any of those companies? Oh, I, I, I work. I mean, I don't work with them, but I, I have talked here and there with Blue Origin. Yes. Um, but these are commercial um, companies, and what's okay. interesting about them is that they're trying to find much cheaper ways of going to space than what the government does. And and what's interesting is that, yeah, the government does really overspend. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. and, <laughs> and I believe that they overspend just because they have so many layers of management and meetings and this and that and so forth. Um, and also, um, you know, there, there's always that overhead of, of your subcontractors. Got you. Um, so that, that's but, where but you But also, say what, about, what about redundancy? Because they're, they're always thinking that if there's an emergency, what's the, what's the backup plan? What's the redundancy? Could, could, could that be part like, of the overrun? No, but you want to have that, right? You gotcha. want to have the re- um, for critical applications. However, what, what the commercial companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin and so forth, they're cutting corners in other ways, in ways that I wouldn't. And they don't want to, I, I'm a little bit expensive. So okay. basically, they, they don't come to me. Because <laughs> <Got you. laughs> they want to cut corners and they're got not you. trying to have me there. <laughs> got you. You, you, you're the wrong person. I got you. I got you. So now do you, do you have, and I'm going to mess this up. Do you have like proprietary uh, information that you've created or software? Yeah. It? Okay. Wow. We, wow. And wow. So, so when you go on to, uh, now do you have governmental clearance like at a, at a certain level? Yeah. Wow just because of who you are and the stuff that you do. Yeah. So with the NASA stuff, uh, most space um, oriented information data, even designs, if you choose to share them, I don't, but um, are fairly open to the public. But when I'm working national security, that's top secret. Got you. Got you. So yeah, I have top secret clearance. You know, I you know I had a joke about that, but I may I may not say that because <laughs> you know they found Trump. Trump had a lot of uh, top secret stuff that he wasn't even supposed to have access to, but he had it. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I think the thing is that I mean, as president, he he probably can have access to anything, but he had it. He stored it in the wrong places. Yeah. There, there, so there are systems where the, the data should only reside on. Exactly. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be in your golf course. It shouldn't be in the locker no. room. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and even meetings. Like yeah. when we have certain meetings, we go in what we call a skiff. Yes. And these things are, you know, mostly usually underground. Um, they don't even have bathrooms that are connected to it. Like you have to stop the meeting so you can go to another place area so that you can use the bathroom um, just because of the pipes and everything. So skiffs are very secure areas. And wow. uh, and he was having meetings that should have been a skiff. Wow. <laughs> so, In his uh, golf course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Bro, I want you to look at this, this uh, top secret, but, you know, put it back when you're done. What? Okay. Now, I this is, this is, this is, I don't know whether he was really having those meetings. This is what I heard on the media. So let me, let me clarify. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Zoom to have those meetings. Yeah, yeah. Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly, yeah. that exact. Yeah. No, I, I, I'm having, I'm, I'm having this conversation with you and I'm having a blast because it's, it's, you know, it's stuff that you see on TV. Wow. My classmate is doing this stuff. This is fat. Do you ever have to pinch yourself? When was the first time, Melanie, you had to pinch yourself and says, 
oh shit, I'm in this space. When, when did that, when did that time happen? Um, gosh, I don't know if, if <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm constantly moving. I'm constantly thinking of the next step and yes. I don't know if, if that has happened. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. I know that, um, once I got into this space yes. and, you know, my daughters were old enough, you know, and I started traveling the world. I know I took advantage of it. I mean, I had a ball yes. across <laughs> the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah, okay. not so much anymore. I'm, you know, yeah. now, now, now I'm, I'm old now. <laughs> you're, you're not, you're, you, you, what, what you said, you're old now? Yeah, you're not old. You're just getting warmed up, right? Well, I don't mean old in a in a negative way. Yeah. I, I, same the way that we have um, the connotations we put to being old. I mean, um, but yeah, I mean, I am old, and 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 I love it, and um, much more calm. Yes, um, you know, my tastes have changed so much. I mean, like, like for me, I don't even like going to big concerts. Okay. If it's something small with like less than a hundred people, like in a garden area. Yes. <laughs> nice. Underst understood. <laughs> understood. Now, do you, now speaking of large space, do you have to have security sometimes? M myself? Yes. I mean, we go through training as scientists when you travel across the world. Yes. Um, things that you need to do, but I, I have never been assigned someone now. Well, listen, when, when this movie comes out, you consider me, I'll put together a security team for you. I got some guys for you. <laughs> l l we're going we're gonna to make this movie, Melanie. Okay. Listen, on, 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 on this platform, I have interviewed uh, uh, actors, actresses, movie directors, right? So we could, mm -hmm. we could, we could put together the... Uh, a movie for you that I think you would be pleased with, right? No. Okay. I um. <laughs> I want, so I want you to think about that when you go to sleep at night. Says, mm, that's a problem. We got to work on that, right? Yeah. I have to say that I mean I have been asked to write a book. Yes. Before, um, and you know, and and so but, what what are your thoughts on the book? I you know. It, it's a lot. Even doing this is a lot because um, sometimes it's not always comfortable Understood. for, you know, you know, opening up your your life or your personal. I mean, that's always like your protective armor yes. that you have. Yes. Especially what, since I put myself in front of people all the time, I like to have that protective coat. <laughs> yes. So... No, no. But I, I mean, have, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I've had a crazy life. Been, it's, I mean, I partied on top of rooftops in Argentina and yes, is all over the. I mean, I've, I've lived a great life. Yes, <laughs> yes. I love I it. A I lot. love it. I love it. Now, do you often, you know, sit down with your daughters and kind of share with them some of the missing pieces that that uh, they weren't a part of as you as as um, as you were being their mother? Um, you know, more so now. I mean, gotcha. um, they're a lot more interested now. Got you. And um, my one daughter, <laughs> she is a uh, like super fan. I mean, whoever thought you know, mother and daughter, you know, your daughter gets to that point. Um, she's very proud, awesome. and and me really proud that. Uh, yeah, that, that that my daughter's happy. Now, do you think any one of your daughters would uh, follow in your footsteps or be a part of your company? So, the math gene skipped that generation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're both brilliant in their own right. I mean, yes. we, everyone has their own brilliance, right? Yes. For me, the word smart gets thrown around so weirdly. Okay. Um, 
And, you know, we all have our different smarts. Um, mine seems to be, um, you know, more than apparent because I only do things I'm really good at. Got you. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> the way it should be, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so my daughter, uh, one of my daughters actually does do some work for me. So Okay, good. So where where, yeah. where are we, Melanie? Uh, five years from now, with your company and with your, and with your, uh, I guess your uh, the work that you do. Where are we five years from now? That's a, a great question. I have some things in the work that I can't really discuss. Understood. Um, got to make sure they they actually <laughs> occur. <Yeah. laughs> um. I'm I'm trying to make a very comfortable bed to uh to retire. Yes. But slowly, you know. But you, um but you but, but you're an entrepreneur, so entrepreneurs don't ever retire now. We just kind of go on to the next project, right? Well, I'd like to have a project where um I don't have to work so much and gotcha. make a lot of money. <laughs> gotcha. Well, let's let's but, do that. Let's do the movie. Then we can spend a lot of time just traveling around the country answer, answering uh, questions. I, I say that, but it, here's the deal. I mean, I'm 57 years old. Yes. I'm still or will be next month. And, you know, I'm still pulling all nighters. Um, I mean, like I work a lot. You know, yes. I, I have half a job. I have my job at my company. And both of them, I'm doing a lot of design work and mathematics, and yes. sometimes it just never stops. No, no, so I'd like to have that slow when's down. Your, when's your birthday, Melanie? April 20th. April 20th. Wow. Well, yeah, a dear friend of mine, her birthday's on April, April, April 20th. Wow. Yeah. I, I just That's, thought that the April, April 20th might be a math gene, but I don't think she's good in math. She's a, she's a strong, super duper entrepreneur, though. I don't know. They, they equate April 20th with, with strength. Well, with marijuana. Well, that too. But <laughs> <laughs> but <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's funny because my mother, I told you she was that yes. you know, original hippie. Yes. And she, you know, to her deathbed, she was saying legalize, legalize. Yes, yes. And, he, and I he, wish I wish she could have seen all of this. Yeah. So the fact that her daughter was born on 420 was a sign. Yeah, but yeah. then when, <laughs> but then when both of her granddaughters were born on 420, she's like, "This is it." Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Your daughters are born on 420 as well. Yeah, all three of us. Are Holy crap! That's crazy. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, there's not, and nothing that happens in my life that's normal. Yes, I would I would say that is not normal. That is not normal. Wow. Wow. And that was not planned. Yeah. I, I, I got a, I've got a question. Um, would some of your applications um, apply to like underwater vehicles? Um. The underwater vehicles that I would work with are with the Navy. Yes. But yeah. Wow. And that's all. Not much I can say. That's all I wanted you to say. Understood. Understood. <laughs> I, I, no, you, you know, you're talking about space. I'm thinking about water as well. So I understand. Wow. Right. I, so, I, I mean, yeah, part of my work bleeds into DOD, right? Yes. So I, I work NASA, but I also do a lot of DOD. Oh, my. I'm, I'm getting excited. You need security. Listen, listen, you need security. I'm going to start a security company <laughs> just for you. Wow. Wait, that's all right. You're Listen, you're my rock star. That's all right. Man. Because <laughs> you know what's so funny? <laughs> I'm, I am having such a blast in this conversation, and I'm looking at maybe the different – parallel lines of life that we're living. So you're saying that at your age, you are pulling an all nighter, you know, working on solutions. Yeah. 
at my age, sometimes I'm pulling all nighter, smoking cigars and drinking tequila. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> I want to grow up to be though. <laughs> <laughs> So oh. this is what I'm trying to say that I'm I'm trying to yeah. steer in that direction. Yeah. Well, listen. Anytime you you want to hang out with me on the porch, you, or or we can switch. I'll do some designs for you. You can have a few cigars with me. You know. <laughs> you know. But I'll you, skip this. Huh? I'll skip the cigars. Okay. And turn the te- te- uh, tequila into some maybe some bourbon or something okay. or wine. Yeah. We can. And can, <laughs> hey, Melanie, can you imagine the design we can create after having some, uh, you know, some wine or tequila? Wow, we. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that's how people pass too. I I don't want to take too much of your time, but this has been fantastic. You are my superstar. Wow, I I am so proud of you and a lot of this. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for feeling comfortable enough to share your story on, on this platform. Is there, is there anything else that you think we might've missed? <laughs> I'm sure. I think, I, I, yeah. I get into the crazy parts of my life, but yeah, that's probably not something to share right now. <laughs> understood, understood. But listen, I'm going to keep this platform open to you, Melanie, because anything that you are doing great, we want to hear about it. And certainly we want to be the first to talk about uh, when the book or movie is coming out. Okay. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I caught you on that one. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Yeah. But um, yeah, the work will still be going. I'm yes. very excited about what's to come. Um, and, uh, and sometimes I just don't even know what's around the corner. Sometimes things just like drop in my lap. Like with this Australian thing, yes, you know they're they're starting their space industry over there, and um and invited me, and in, and I'll be going back next year. Um, wow. just to be part of all of that is really exciting. Just never know. So you think you could have maybe a dual living kind of uh situation where you maybe spend three four months over there? Um, right now I'm having to figure out. Um, do I give up my clearance and start doing more work with other, other countries or not? So, okay. um, wow. I, I'm not yet. Understood. Understood. Now I want to go back to my uh, original question for, for young ladies of, of, uh, of color. What should they be doing now to be in a space where you are? Any advice you yep. would give to them? We're all so different and, and you know, it depends on what you mean by my space. But, you know, for me, math just came so easily. So uh, I had the tools to be here. Yes. Unfortunately, I didn't have um, the white male um, exterior to be here. <laughs> so, I, so I, um, yeah, I did encounter a lot. Um, and still am, and you just have to to be strong. Um, we we have so many people that end up leaving this field or 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 a technical field because of the uncomfort, yes. because of being dismissed um, or threatened, or you know it's it's difficult. Um, I I know that would help me. Um, and I, I never thought that this would be something that would help me Yes, because I've always been such a strong in my head, independent woman was, um, finding, you know, the man of my dream Yes, and, you know, having that shoulder to cry on or getting that hug, um, just having someone that cares about you there when you're going through these really difficult times makes, makes a really big difference. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. I think we it's can, one, no, go, go, go ahead. It's one thing as black women, um, we, we, we grow up having to be so strong. Yes. And, and we forget that, that care and hugs and love means a big difference. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Me- Melanie, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I mean, we could end on that note, but I'm going to give you the final, the final say anything and however you think we should close. 
I, I think that was that was a good note right there. And um I um <laughs> I appreciate you reaching out yes. and this was a great conversation. You do Thank a you. great job to interview others and um I'm proud of you too. You Thank you're you. doing a great Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Melanie, this has been fantastic. I am so proud of you. As I said earlier, the platform is always open for you to you. I want to wish you nothing but complete success and continued blessings in all of your endeavors. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Say the same to you. Thank you so much. Let's talk in tech later on. All right. Take right. care, Kevin. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. That concludes another episode of The Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. We hope you found this episode informative and enlightening. If you have any questions or comments about any of our episodes, please call 609-731-9382 609-731-9311 or email Kevin at minding-our-business.com We look forward to joining us for our next one. Until next time.